today I'm going to share my thoughts on what I sewed during the month of January. Hey everyone, my name is Whitney and I love to knit and sew my own clothes and share a bit about that process here on my YouTube channel, Whit Makes. And I try to have a weekly video up. You know, I keep trying to make a plan and it keeps not working, but this is this week's video and I think I have a video for next week. So it's all good if you like hearing about knitting and sewing and we're going to talk a little bit about sustainable fashion as well. Hit that subscribe button and follow me here. I wanted to, I guess, like make an announcement that I have deactivated my Instagram account for the foreseeable future in case you're like looking for me there. I know I have people that I regularly talk to and um, that tag me or I tag them or whatever. And just know it didn't block you. It's, I'm not gone forever. Um, I might talk about this, well, in a nutshell. <laughs> I do this quite a bit where I kind of leave social media. And a few weeks ago, I just took it off my phone and I just didn't check it all week. And I read a book and a half. <laughs> I sewed quite a bit. I knit quite a bit. And I actually did some writing. So for me right now, I'm taking a step back from consuming content and inspiration. And I'm trying I'm really trying to find my rhythm in my own making and figuring it out, which we'll talk about a little bit more today too. And not being on social media is really helpful with that. And for me, even when I just delete it from my phone, I still like get on. And I, so I just deactivated it. I'm going to try and stay off until May. I might get on for me made May. I might not, I might not miss it. I don't know, but that's kind of my plan, but like nothing bad happened or anything. I just, um, I get tired of being sold stuff, <laughs> but I don't follow a lot of influencers, but still there's a lot of ads. And while I love seeing the makes and how people are using patterns or fabric and yarn, there is something to be said for pausing that and turning your attention to your own stash and your own wants and everything. So that's where I am on that. But just in case you're looking for me, my friend <laughs> called me and she was like, what happened? Did you block me? Are you not there? What's going on? I just, it feels silly to like make an announcement, but I feel like I need to make an announcement. So that's what's going on there. I will link my blog below. I have some blog posts about the things that I'm talking about today as well i think i have my ravelry linked on there for knitting but um yeah and then i will link everything i talk about patterns fabric all of that in the description box below if i forget something leave me a comment and i will help you out okay so i'm really excited today because this is all sewing now i long ago started this podcast and I only talked about or started this YouTube channel and I only talked about sewing and then I got into knitting and I've been trying to balance both and then man like midway through the year last year maybe even in the spring I just lost my sojo I did not want to make anything I felt like everything I made did not turn out well um, I was having like maybe like a, even like a little bit of a style like what am I even wearing every day? I am home. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Uh, so you know, I when I get out, it's like for carpool or running errands. Like I'm not in an office. I'm not seeing people, and I just kind of like lost the want to create clothes and even wear clothes. And I've I've been coming back to it. And a few key things. One, I am dressing for the life I actually live and I'm embracing it. I'm trying to find ways to feel creative in a casual uh, closet, in a casual wardrobe. I could not think of the word. Um, with my casual wardrobe, trying to figure out what makes me feel my best, makes me feel good. And I'm also, one thing with getting off of Instagram as well is I like getting dressed just for myself. What do I want to wear every day and still feel put together and cute or whatever. 
so it's been a bit of a journey i don't know i think it's a little bit of you know i just turned 40 so there's maybe like some stuff there with a big birthday but i do think it's embracing that i stay at home embracing just my life right now you know we all went through covid and we all we're still going through covid we all went through the lockdown and everything got super cat and we we all got casual and no one was going anywhere and it feels like now uh people are going back to the office and styles are changing and people are kind of embracing different kinds of fashion and i maybe i was feeling like a little bit like i was stuck behind and i wasn't quite sure how to move forward so anyway i've not had any sojo i haven't wanted to make anything i haven't felt good about making anything so I've been doing videos and most of, like I've been knitting mostly uh, because the process of knitting is something I can do even with all three kids home. I can, you know, I'm wearing sweaters, I'm wearing socks. So it, it fit my lifestyle, but I'm happy. That was a long winded way to report that I think I'm finding my Sojo. I think I'm finding my groove. The other thing that really prevents me from sewing regularly is I do have three children children one of them has special needs and I cannot I can no longer sew when he is in the vicinity like he must he requires all my attention or my pre like I need to be right next to him he's also very curious and wants to get into everything and he loves the sewing machine and he's like figured out how to turn it on and so i just i can't have any of this out and i was having a really hard time figuring out a rhythm to sew and so that was one of my goals this year this new year was to figure out how to embrace the limited time that i have how to make the most of it and this month i think i really nailed it so i'm going to show you what i sewed and then kind of talk about what worked and why I'm so excited about it. And then I have some plans and some change of plans I want to talk about. I'm not making any plans. Like maybe we do this once a month. Maybe we just do it when I have stuff to talk about. We shall see. All right. I'm not wearing anything handmade today. This is actually, I think this is from Gap. It is a navy little merino, super normal sweater, but, um, I wanted to wear it because I can model for you <laughs> and show you some things that I made and how that worked out. So let me take a drink of water and let's get started. Okay, last time I shared sewing. Okay, last time I shared any sewing, I was sharing that I made all three kids. Let's do, actually, sorry, back up, back up. I have been recording for my own benefit and to kind of help me out with this trying to find my way in how I can make stuff. I made 11 things, all right? I sewed three pajama sets. I think I might have counted, I don't know how I counted this. <laughs> no, I, I think I counted that as three. So I sewed three pajama sets for my kids. I sewed two leggings and two tops, and I sewed one coat. I don't know how I got to 11. It doesn't matter. Somehow I divided up the PJ sets. Um, uh, let's say I did, I'm going to change this. I don't know what my math was. I don't know what I did. So let's say we'll count the three pajama sets as three things. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I did eight. Okay. Sorry. Sorry you had to witness that. Eight finished. Eight sewed. I sewed eight things this month. Three pajama sets, two leggings, two tops, and then one coat. So let me briefly touch. I did bring down Sam's, my youngest's, pajamas now um i do have a little it's not a great picture i'll put in a picture my big kids didn't want their picture taken that's fine so i made them all matching pants for sam i used the thomas track pants by love notions for my older kids i used a new look new look pattern that actually like it worked fine for them but i sh i probably should have done a kids pattern i talked briefly briefly last time as well 
my kids are like the, that tween age and they're not like they're at the very end of most children's sizes or the very beginning of adult sizes and like figuring out how to buy clothes for them make clothes for them but I should have done the children's for the waist and then just lengthened it but I did it it's fine whatever this flannel is from Joanne and I got it for $2.99 a yard plus a discount because I cleared out the bolt. I have a little bit left that I will share some other time what I think I'm going to do with it but it's just super simple cozy pajama pants they love. I believe I made the size 5T for my five-year-old and then I used the driftwood pattern also by Love Notions for all of their tops. So I got three sweater knits. I got a cream. I got almost this exact same color and pretty much this exact same color for each kid. So they all have different tops and they're a textured knit also from Joanne. Two of them were on, one of them was on mega sale, another was on sale and I think this one was full price and I used a coupon. So rarely I feel like does making your own clothes come out cheaper than buying, but I think these three pajama sets, I might have saved money <laughs> making them. So that's a win. Also, everything's long enough for everybody and everyone's happy. They look really cute. Hopefully I put in a picture of Sam. And so that was a win. So I finished all of those. And I know I had talked about the older kids, but I did finish Sam since the last time we spoke. And then I made myself two layers loungy type things and I did take a picture I only have one of them here because my other one's in the wash because I wear these all the time so I live in Colorado it actually hasn't been that cold but on the days that it is cold I usually wear some kind of long johns or leggings or something under my pants not always on my shirt because you know you can like layer with something like this and a sweater or whatever, but I almost always have some kind of base layer on. And I was finding that one of my most worn things last year, I made out of a merino knit, maybe even two years ago, I made a little, I made a legging, I made a sports bra, and I made a long sleeve shirt. And I wear it all the time. And I was like, why don't I just make some more of these? So I bought this stretch polar fleece, I think is what it's called. If there's any left, I'll put it below. It's from Surge Fabrics. I love Surge Fabrics for athletic knits, uh, specific knits like this that are a little bit, like when I'm looking for stretch fleece or something, I usually look at Surge first. And they get some good sweater knits and dead stock knits and stuff. Anyway, I was searching, I wanted a fleecy knit. So I found it there. And I love the Megan Nielsen Virginia Leggings this is my tried and true basic leggings pattern. I It's great for working out, it doesn't have any pockets or anything. I have a different pattern that I like for um, like my yoga pants or whatever. But this is a great basic pattern. It comes in their extended size range now. There are different waistband options, there's different length options. I feel like there's one more thing that you can customize, but I can't remember what it is. But I like the full length, with the super high waistband. I love this because I can pull it up. I mean, if I pull it up, sometimes it comes like to my boobs, but when you have on pants, there's nothing like bunched right here and it's warm. <laughs> so I, like I am fully covered in these uh, layers. And it's also great, I always wear something like this when I'm skiing. And again, you have a lot of thick fabric kind of all meeting right here. So when I can have my waistband go above it, it's just a lot more comfortable. So I love this pattern. I believe I made, I put it in the blog post. I think I made a size eight this time. I had to reprint it, which was annoying because I don't know what I did with it initially, but it's a super simple pattern. It's two pattern pieces in the waistband. I'm sorry, it's one pattern piece for the leg. It, there is no seam on the side. So basically there's two pieces, you sew them together and you add a waistband. It's super quick. And I used this beautiful blue color and then I have kind of a sagey green. And my first pair when I made the waistband, I the right side 
was on both the inside and the outside. And then I realized I would rather have that fleecy part so that when I wear it, and you can totally wear it folded down if you want, like a yoga pant kind of thing. I just never do. Um, so when it's up, the fleecy part is next to my skin, which is nice. Although this is soft and fine as well. I don't have a serger. I do this on my regular machine. I don't think I, I did not. I did not hem the legs because it's fleece. You ain't gonna, like nothing's coming unraveled. And yeah, it's a super simple, great legging that I wear, like I said, under everything. For the top, I decided to try the Seamwork Astoria. I made this as like a sweater earlier, um, I guess in December. And I just love the fit of it. I love that it's a little more fitted. It comes into your waist. And I liked the neckline. Again, I can wear, you know, my uh, neck warmer when I'm skiing words or my balaclava or something or even a turtleneck. And it's just like, and then my big ski jacket and not, I'm not like feeling like there's a ton of stuff here. So I like that it's a little more open. So I did the Seamark Astoria. I believe I make the size medium in this. I do add length and I also took off the band. Again, I didn't want a bunch of fabric right there. So I add, I almost add like three inches. This was a cropped sweater and then added accommodated for the band not being there around the waist. And then I just um, did a really simple hem on the sleeves and a simple neck band. So this is, I don't know that I would ever wear this like just by itself. I mean, oh, it's just a long sleeve t-shirt, I guess. Maybe I would. But it's, again, great for layers. I have worn it under my overalls, which is kind of cute. And yeah, so these are long johns. They're long johns in a thick fleece fabric. They are warm. Great. Loved it. Most worn <laughs> item that I have in my wardrobe are my basic layers right now. So those are all of the kind of simple sews, but also very neat. Like I needed them. They're very wearable sews that I made this month. And then, oh, there's my dryer. Let me turn it off. And then I decided I wanted to make a coat. Now I had planned my winter module. And we're going to talk about that and how that's going. But I, Style Maker Fabrics has, if you sign up for their newsletter, you can sign up your birthday and they will give you a discount code to use during your birthday month. I think it's like 25% off. And it was near the end of, De of December and I wanted to use my birthday code. And I just went looking and I think I was looking in like new arrivals. Like I didn't have anything. I was just kind of scrolling. And I saw this beautiful wool. Do I have a better? Okay, here's a little remnant to kind of show you close up. I saw this beautiful wool in this Southwestern inspired print. And it just it stood out to me and I clicked on it and I immediately was like, I want a coat in that. I have a friend that her kid is in Sam's class and she has, it's not quite like this, but she has like a, a big warm Southwestern vibe coat. And I was totally inspired by that. And I was like, I want one of those. I would wear that all the time. So I had recently purchased Simplicity 9854. And I just was like, that's it. That's, this is the coat. <laughs> so I ordered the fabric. I showed you guys last time I went to Joanne and I got some cotton flannel for the lining and I started on this maybe like the second week of January. This took me about three weeks, maybe even three and a half weeks and I just took my time and I'm going to talk about this in a second, but let's talk a little bit about the pattern, a little bit about the fabric, and then we'll talk about the process and the finished result. So I believe, ooh, I'm going to put it feel like this comes in their women's sizing as well. But I will say yes or no over here if it does. This is their misses and it comes in 8 to 26. Maybe they consider that their women's sizing. I'm sorry, I should have looked this up. I'll put the info 
on the screen. But that is a bust of 31 and a half inches to 48 inches. A 24 inch waist to a 41 and a half inch waist. And a 33 and a half inch hip to a 50 inch hip. That might be their full size range. Uh, anyway, it calls for coating, coating fabric. It recommends boucle, stretch wovens, tweed, twill, wool blends, and then you need a lining. And there's also a bit of interfacing. This is a draw. I'll put the picture in so you don't have to see my wonky <laughs> uh, pattern involved. This is a drop shoulder oversized coat. It has um, a nice uh, full lapel here, a notched collar. It has these patch pockets with the little flap on top. I don't know the name of that. And it does have two buttons. I don't have buttons on mine. I'll talk about that in a second. And yeah, it's just that oversized, it's not a blazer, but that oversized kind of blazer coat look. And I bought the pattern on sale because I liked that look. I love the one she's wearing in that bright orange. I think that's beautiful. And it was just meant to be when I saw this fabric. Like I said, this fabric is a wool and I loved the kind of warm natural colors of it um, there's some red and dark green there's a little bit of black in here and some purple i just love it so one side is definitely soft and then one side you can see the texture a little bit more this does fray like crazy and i don't have a serger if I were to use this fabric again or to do this again, I would probably serge all the pattern pieces and then sew. And since I don't have a serger, I would use like a zigzag stitch or something. Now it's fully lined, so um, everything's like tucked in there, but still that would be like a nice extra bit of stability. So this fabric otherwise was lovely to work with. My machine had no problem. And let's talk about it. Okay, I made a straight size 10, and I think the fit is pretty good. Um, I worked hard. <laughs> the thing I wanted to pattern match the most was the back, and I think I nailed it. <laughs> and then I did try, and I think I did a good job, and I knew like the front, I wanted it to, and I did, I did actually I did a great job pattern matching so that these lines are all continuous um I what was I oh the buttons so truth be told we got near the end of the project and I had forgotten that I needed buttons on this but and this isn't just lazy I, I could have added them I will never wear it buttoned I like it open like this and I think that works. So that was the one thing I didn't do was I didn't add the buttons. For the lining, I used that cotton flannel and I did do a little bias tape thing to hang it up. I kind of wish I'd had something cuter, <laughs> but I knew this would be nice and strong. And so, uh, I mean, you don't see it unless it's hanging up, but it doesn't quite, quite match. But I did use this cotton flannel because I wanted this to be really warm. And then a few of you were worried about the sleeves with it, and I agreed with you. And I happen to have some slippery lining fabric in my stash. It happens to be blue. I mean, it doesn't match. Um, I didn't care that, what color it was because you can't see it. But I do have actual lining fabric in my sleeve, which is quite nice. So I can like wear a sweater or whatever, and it's easy to get in and out. Um, what else? Let's put it on. I am so happy with this and I took some footage and pictures so hopefully you can see there's a nice um, dart in the front for the shaping and yeah this nice facing fully lined it's fantastic I, I will say you just and here's one where like it is fraying just a little bit right there um, or my lining is separate from it. Uh, it's just a hem on the, but I don't know. I feel like it looks okay. I don't know what else you would do. Um, yeah, it has a two 
piece sleeve. It just fits really nicely. I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. I feel like a Colorado woman. <laughs> I feel like I can go hiking in the mountains. So I know it's hard to see, but hopefully I'm putting in footage. This pattern, now I don't know, I've made simplicity patterns. I don't know that I've made any more complicated simplicity patterns. And I just say this is complicated because it is fully lined and there are a lot of pieces and interfacing and all that kind of stuff. And I thought these instructions were fantastic. And I thought the finishings were fantastic. How they have you line everything. Um, it just, it came together beautifully. I was so impressed with this pattern. I, you know, I've made a few McCall's patterns that are a little more in depth. And sometimes the instructions leave something to be desired or they finish something in a way that I'm like, why didn't they take the time? Or maybe it feels like they've tried to simplify it for a wider audience or something. And I'm sorry, I don't have a specific example, but I know that there have been things like I've made a dress from Butterick and they didn't interface the button placket. And like later I was like, why didn't they do just sometimes details like that. Um, and then, you know, sometimes they are very intense and maybe the instructions are having you do a technique and they just have like one little diagram and you're like, oh my God, I don't know what that means. I just want to say this was fantastic in its construction, in its instructions on that construction. Like I, there was no part where I didn't get it. Sometimes with linings, I have a hard time like spatially <laughs> like seeing it or something. I didn't have any issues and I just, I was so happy with the fit and the finishes on this pattern. So I highly recommend this for a coat pattern. It makes me excited for new simplicity patterns that maybe have a little bit more construction elements to them that my, I might look at me like, oh, that might be a little difficult. Like I'm gonna maybe trust them a little bit more. So I highly recommend this one for this style of coat. I am thrilled with it and I enjoyed making it and I've been wearing it almost every single day. I just throw it over whatever I've got on and it feels like when you have this nice coat, even running it, like I could have sweatpants on and my snow boots running in for school drop off. Like I feel a little bit more put together. So very, very happy with this make, which leads me to kind of analyzing how I made it. I took my time. I did it in little pieces. It felt like it was started to feel like it was taking forever, but I just took my time with it. Um, and you know, I was really inspired to make it and, and it, I was just inspired to make it the whole time. It fits my lifestyle and it was just, this is what I want my sewing to be moving forward. It inspired me for like thinking about what I want to make next and yeah, instead of sewing things just to sew things, I made a piece that will last for years and years that I will wear every day. And that makes me really, really happy. So like I said, I think I'm finding my groove. I think I'm figuring out how I want to create. And I hope that sharing this process, like if this is informational, inspirational, whatever, that we're finding a way to do that. I don't want to be just making things to have to talk on the channel. I want them to be pieces like this where I'm just thrilled <laughs> with the whole with the whole thing. So that was really nice to get to that point and to realize I was like, oh, I followed my intentions. I slowed down. I, I made something for the life that I actually live and made it really well and I've been wearing the heck out of it. So there you go. That is what I made in January. Let's talk about moving forward. <laughs> I'm ready to start sewing for spring. It is early February. It's going to snow. Like we have more winter, even if it's a mild winter. I know it's not spring yet, but the colors, I'm excited about knitting for spring, all of it. So I'm kind of in planning zone, planning mode for spring. And I'm also trying to figure out like buying like purchases and making and all of this stuff. So 
Let me first talk about what I want to make next in February and then we'll move on. So I had two more, th no, I had, well, four more things. Let me just pick this up. Oh. I had, I have four more things left on my winter module plans. And I'm cutting out some of those. After this process, after thinking about what I wear, after looking at my closet and how many clothes I actually have and what I need, I'm making a few adjustments. So I am still, and I actually just washed this fabric and I want to cut it out very soon. I want to make the Dawn jeans out of this corduroy. These are still happening. I think I will wear the heck out of these. Even if, I think I'll still wear this this spring. This feels very fall to me with the corduroy, but I think some of the colors I have coming up, I think I can work with the color and make it springy. Like look at it with this purple nail polish. I love it. So high waisted, I'm going to make the high waist, well then back up, Dawn jeans, Megan Nielsen. They are high waisted. I'm going to make the flared option and I want to make them full length, not cropped. So that's what this is gonna be. I've been putting these off because they are a more intense make, but the coat has given me a little bit of confidence that I can do things little by little. It might take all month, it might go into March, but I can absolutely do it. So this is coming up uh, soon. Now, this fabric oh, that I love and adore, and I am obsessed with this green color and I'm bringing it in to my spring wardrobe. I was going to make, oh, a Vogue pattern. I'll put the picture here. And I think this would be beautiful. I bought the lining. This would be gorgeous. This would be a gorgeous dress. I would never wear it. I have nowhere to wear this. <laughs> and there is something to be said of just making beautiful things of blah, blah, blah. But I am in this stage right now. I, I don't have the time for that. I want to make something that I will actually wear. So I have decided this is either going to be maybe a bias cut skirt, a slip dress, a bias cut slip dress. I don't know. I have a couple of patterns I'm considering. I'm thinking maxi or midi length. I feel like a slip dress would be great because I could wear layers on top and wear it as a skirt. And then maybe this, it would probably be summer, not spring, but then be able to wear it by itself in the summer. So this is still happening. We're pushing it back and we're turning it into something else. And I feel really good about that because while that dress would be fabulous, it'd probably be really fun to make. Like I said, I just, I would not wear that anywhere. So I'm excited about that and happy with my plan. The last thing I had planned was I was going to do the Hive sweater and the Weaver skirt by Allie Olson. I bought these patterns. I actually have them printed out and I still think this is an adorable set. I think on their own the pieces are great and maybe I will make them soon but I'm not going to make them out of this fabric. <laughs> so I bought this fabric from Minerva and I can't remember quite, I remember opening it and being like oh that's not what I thought. I think the color I'll have to go back and look. I don't know if the color was a little more sunshine or a little more mustard, I'm, I don't know. This, well, for one, it looks very fluorescent on camera, I don't know if it's quite that bright, but it's bright. And it has a little bit of a green undertone maybe to it that it's not, I don't know, it's not my yellow. And I could work with that. But what I really was displeased with is the texture. It's like almost textured. <laughs> it feels to me like a bedspread texture. Like it doesn't feel like a sweater texture. It's not, yeah, it didn't go all the way sweater and it didn't stay just plain knit. And it does, it feels like a bedspread to me. And I have been putting this off, not wanting to do it. And so I think I'm just scrapping it. I'm not even going to try. I was talking to my friend yesterday and you know, this could be like cool, like wide leg lounge pants maybe. 
I think I'm gonna make my niece a little pair of sweat I have so much of this I have a ton of this and I'm really disappointed in my purchase and this fabric but I am gonna make one thing out of it uh, here pretty quickly and then I'm going to put it in my stash and maybe also it just feels more like a fall color. I don't know. I'll figure out something to do with it, but it's not happening right now. It is not making me happy to think about or look at. And I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do with this texture. And I think I don't want it near my face. So maybe, yeah, like a wide leg, embrace the 70s-ness of it, because it feels kind of retro. Um, you know, my daughter might like a pair of like joggers in it or something. I don't know. The texture's throwing me off and I'm tired of thinking about it and looking at it. So I'm going to tuck it away and we'll come back to it later. And I feel great about that. So that's what I have coming up. I am going to use the rest of my fleece for some kids clothes. I, I'm trying to film a little video where I show that process and hopefully you see that next week as a bit of a vlog. And I want to do some scrappy projects and I will show all that coming up. And then when I get all my fabrics in and kind of get my wardrobe figured out for spring, I will talk, I will talk spring plans in general. Oh, I also, this was a bit of a, I think I bought this with the fleece from Serge. I'll link it. I can't remember exactly what fabric it is, but I want to make a navy Marlowe cardigan by True Bias. When I saw the Eva cardigan by Petite Knit come out, I I really like the v-neck of it and I believe that has a double knit button band. I just, I liked the whole, I liked the whole vibe. Or does it have two by two? No, I think it, whatever, it doesn't matter. When I saw it, I was like, I could sew that <laughs> a lot faster out of the Marlowe. And I saw this sweater knit, it's navy, on I believe Serge, and it's, it doesn't have a ton of stretch. There is some stretch in it. I don't know if they called it a sweatshirt fleece, I can't remember. It's not as soft as a sweatshirting, it definitely feels like wool, it feels like a wool sweater. And so I'm gonna make a cardigan out of this, and I, I don't know, there you go. I might do this as the inside and this is the outside because um, this would be softer against skin. But we'll see. But I think I'm going to do the crop, the more cropped version, get some fun buttons, and make myself a Marlowe cardigan. I think I would wear this quite a bit, especially through the spring, maybe even into the summer, <laughs> definitely in the fall. And yeah, I'm excited about that one as well. So sorry, those are all my plans. Let's pivot really quickly. I want to, I used to talk a lot about sustainable fashion. I kind of moved away from that and still had it in my head, but didn't feel like an expert on it. Didn't feel like I was really living by those standards. And so something I want to do is kind of keep track, not only of my making, but what I'm buying and adding to my wardrobe. And I'm going to figure out how to use that in my channel and talk about my clothes and wearing my clothes and blah, blah, blah. So I wanted to share what I bought and what I brought in to my closet this month. I made two impulse purchases at Target. I bought a bright green sweatshirt, which you've seen me wear because I wear it all the time and I bought some Target overalls which I don't know if you've seen but I wear them all the time so those are my two they're fast fashion they were impulse buys however <laughs> and at first I, I I didn't feel guilty about them but I after I had bought them I was like I really don't want to make clothing purchases like this I really want to be more intentional but I also have been wearing the hell out of them so there is something to be said for knowing exactly what you like. And I think as far as fast fashion purchases go, those were two good ones in that I'm gonna wear them to death. So those were two things I bought. I also thrifted, I believe four sweaters. I went to the thrift store and you know, I live in Colorado and so they had all like all their sweaters and it was blue tag day and it was like 50% off. 
and a lot of the sweaters were blue tags and I got I should maybe do, maybe I'll do like a wrap up of things I thrift for the winter or whatever but I got a cute cardigan I got like a valentine day sweater and a really beautiful blue gap sweater I can't remember all of them now but oh and then a fun kind of brioche lime green kind of sweater so I was really excited about that and I had a lot of fun and I've been wearing them so much. So I think I got, did I say four? Four thrifted sweaters, one bright green sweatshirt and one pair of overalls from Target. And that's all I bought to add to my closet. So I'm pretty happy with that. And again, I'm just taking the time to observe like when I bought those things, like how I felt afterwards, if I'm wearing them. And we're going to do a bit of a wrap up at the end of winter on all that and see moving forward for spring, what I want to change. So I wanted to put that in here because I am gonna keep track of that. Okay, I think that's it for me today. I would love to know what you're sewing. Are you finishing up winter? Are you jumping right to spring? <laughs> it's hard, it's hard when you see all those spring bright, happy colors. Ooh, they're so good. So I would love to hear about it in the comments. Let me know what you're working on, what you're planning. Let me know if you've made a coat. I want to now make more coats. I don't know that I need a lot more, but this was so enjoyable. I want more coats. <laughs> I want to try more of those. Um, yeah, let me know coats you're making, your favorite coat pattern, all that kind of thing. I will be back next week, I hope, with a little vlog of what I worked on this week so you can see a bit of my process and how I'm fitting in the sewing. And I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll talk to you next time.